Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic this year has serious impacts on the social economic development of all countries in the world. With the initial achievements in control of the pandemic and the great effort in recovering its macroeconomy, Vietnam is considered as a safe destination for foreign investors. Da Nang's government is urgently preparing required conditions to attract the new investment inflow in the post-COVID-19 period. Today, we hold this webinar in order to promote the city investment environment and opportunity to businesses and investors. Thank you very much for your participation of our distinguished speakers <coughs> and the attention of all businesses and investors today. Now, I would like to introduce our speakers. Peter Le Chung Ching, Vice Chairman of Da Nang's People Committee. Mr. Phạm Trường Sơn, Head of Da Nang High Tech Park and Industrial Parks Authority. Mr. Luke Dreller, Director of Strategy and National Head of Healthcare and Life Sciences, KPMG Vietnam. Mr. Chris Allen Van Loon, Member of Board of Governor, Amcham Da Nang. Mr. Lee Willis, General Manager of UAC Vietnam. Mr. Aurelian Palas, Managing Director of Ubisoft Vietnam. And me, I'm Huynh Liên Phương, Director of Da Nang Investment Promotion Agency, IPA Da Nang. Firstly, I would like to invite Mr. Le Chung Ching, Vice Chairman of Da Nang's People's Committee, to deliver the opening remark, please. On behalf of the Danang City's People's Committee, I would like to send my warmest greetings to all of you and wish all of you good health, happiness and success, ladies and gentlemen. Danang is one of the five municipalities directly under the central government and is the most dynamic city in the central region of Vietnam. With the aspiration and determination to be a green and smart city, a hub for entrepreneurship and innovation, and a regionally recognized livable coastal city in Asia, recently the city has taken the initiative to make positive changes and new strategies. According to the plan to year 2030 with a vision to year 2045, Da Nang will prioritize development on three key pillars, including tourism, high technology, and marine economy. Accordingly, the city will focus its investment into five driving and key areas. First, tourism and high quality services linked with the real estate for relaxation. Second, seaport and airport linked with logistics services. Third, high technologies linked with the development of urban area for innovation and entrepreneurship. Fourth, IT industry, electronics, and telecommunication linked with the digital economy. And fifth, high tech agriculture and fisheries. Today, uh, the Da Nang City's organized investment promotion webinar on the theme Da Nang, the next South Asia Silicon Valley for investment, with the aim to introduce opportunities for investment and business in Da Nang, as well as its in incentive and supporting policies for investment in areas such as high technologies, ICT, and high quality services. Apart from the provision of information on Da Nang business and investment environment and the investment experience sharing from the guest speakers at this webinar, we will be willing to answer any question and receive feedback as well as suggestion from businesses, investors, and interested viewers. To start, I would like to invite your attention to a short clip of introduction to Danang City, please. Feel the sea breeze. Experience world-class spaces at luxury resorts. Taste traditional cuisine. Enjoy the festivals. Be impressed with growth potential. UAC chose Da Nang for a variety of reasons. First of which certainly is the people and the institutions that exist here in Da Nang. 
the infrastructure has proven to be highly reliable and advantageous to our manufacturing intensive processes. We've had excellent communication, transparency, and work with the local government, the city officials, ministries, and other institutions in Da Nang, including the High Tech Park, that facilitated our investment in a manner that brought us to operation very quickly. Da Nang is an excellent location uh, with uh, a very close by port and with a little bit of improvement it's, uh, of its transportation and the uh, cleanness, a good steady policy and the safety of the city without the, uh, the, the big city uh, complications, uh, Da Nang I think has a huge potential. A Socio Smart City Award. Top one in Google's trending destination listed among 52 places to go by the New York Times. Top 10 best places to live overseas by Live and Invest Overseas. Awarded Asian's leading festival and event destination by the World Travel Awards. Recognized in the top five cities for meetings in Asia by Smart Travel Asia. Da Nang is the center of education of the central region with varied and synchronous educational services. The labor force accounts for more than 50% of the city population. The system of universities, colleges, and vocational schools in the city is training nearly 45,000 workers annually. A startup city with a high investment ranking attracting applications of new technology and a friendly administrative environment, Da Nang is a promising destination for startups. Da Nang Port is the most well-equipped port in central Vietnam and is one of the largest commercial ports in the country. Da Nang has six industrial parks with a total area of over 1,000 hectares. The Nang software and IT parks cater to the fast-growing demand for the IT industry. Da Nang High Tech Park aims to boost the development of science and technology of the city and of the central region of Vietnam. It has an international healthcare standard with leading experts and highly qualified physicians and doctors. Da Nang International Airport is one of the three largest airports in Vietnam with direct flights to many Asian countries. Building a smart city. It is a modern city that is still close to nature and retains the traditional culture. Da Nang's goal from now until 2050 is to become a world-class modern city with three economic pillars identified as tourism, high-tech, and marine-based economy, committing to continued innovation and regulatory reform. The city has gradually affirmed the position, proving a strong attraction of a positive landmark, promising to bring success to investors. え、Thank you very much for your kind attention. We should do uh, so now I would like to invite Mr. Luke Dreller from KPMG Vietnam to deliver his speech. Please. Good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, my name is Luke Trelor. I'm uh, the director of strategy consulting for Vietnam. I'm also the head of uh, market entry and expansion consulting for the uh, for the country. 
in this role, I work with some of the largest and most sophisticated investors in the world. But I also work with some small and medium-sized enterprises that are new to Asia and new to Vietnam. So I thought over the next few minutes, I'd walk you through a bit of what Vietnam has accomplished so far, where we're going, and what uh, Da Nang has to offer. So a bit about what Vietnam has accomplished so far. So <coughs> in my role, I work with some companies that are relatively new to Asia, and perhaps they're just now discovering Vietnam because of geopolitical circumstances, and maybe they're starting to re-diversify uh, uh, into other markets. Many people don't realize that Vietnam is actually the fastest growing digital market in Asia. Uh, from 2015 to, to now, Vietnam actually uh, uh, grew its digital market from uh, by uh, five-fold. In terms of fintech, Vietnam is the second largest market in Southeast Asia, second only to Singapore. Mm. In fact, 30% of all uh, investment in fintech comes straight to Vietnam. Mm. On physical assets, Vietnam is a, a large investor in, uh, in uh, uh, manufacturing and has hosts Intel, Samsung, Nokia, and many other large companies. This is because of a concerted effort of the government to refocus investment, shift priority sectors, and funnel new capital into the development of new uh, industries. This opens up opportunity for private capital and new participation of the private sector. Now, I understand these slides will be shared to participants, so we won't go through each of the slides in detail. Now, what about Vietnam as a rising star in the tech sector? What is driving this? It's hard to talk about GDP these days because of the COVID situation, but I can say with all honesty that I would rather be nowhere else than Vietnam right now. Even before, Vietnam, even before COVID, Vietnam was one of the fastest growing economies in Asia, and now because of the rapid response to the COVID crisis, we think that Vietnam will be one of the best countries coming out of the crisis. This, is driven, this economic growth is driven by young population, rising middle income, increasing connectivity to the rest of the world through FDAs, beneficial labor costs, and a stable uh, taxation environment. So over the next few slides, these get a little bit nerdy, so please bear with me. On the bottoms of the graph, this is looking backwards. On the vertical axis, or the y-axis, as math people call it, this is looking forwards. So as you can see, over the last five years, on per capita growth in, uh, in income, Vietnam has been one of the fastest growing economies uh, in Asia and will continue to be going forward. In the second graph, we look at annual consumer expenditures. Vietnam was slower than Thailand, but now going forward will accelerate and probably be faster than the other Asian economies. This is probably the result of the government's concerted effort to reduce poverty and expand the middle class. Looking at cell phone uh, usage, Vietnam is one of the fastest growing uh, cell phone markets in Asia and will continue to be going forward. Putting technology in the pockets of the consumer will enable new modern technologies and modern, uh, modern economies. Let's take a look at the infrastructure the government has provided people. So using mobile download speeds and fixed broadband as a proxy for infrastructure development, you can see that Vietnam is one of the fastest and uh, most equipped uh, mobile download uh, markets in Asia and in the middle of the pack for the rest of Asia for uh, fixed broadband. Now, that's very impressive in of itself, but if you consider GDP per capita as a proxy for national wealth, Vietnam is punching way above its weight in terms of its infrastructure and development. Where is Vietnam going from here? And when did this all begin to change? If you look at Vietnam policy, the, policy, the national level policies of Vietnam and the transition away from, from heavy industry and into high tech, we see that there was a transition about 2010, 2011 or 12, when Vietnam refocused its industry and became a net exporter from a net importer. This represented a, a, a shift in the economy and the composition of the economy. So let's dive in a little bit. Taking a look at the composition of trade over time, starting in 2006, the total export value of Vietnam was only $45 billion and dominated by textiles and agricultural products. Now, these are all obviously very important products to Vietnam. 
and will be going forward. But if you look at the same breakdown under current, under current uh, time frame, you see it's dominated by technology and uh, uh, integrated circuits. So the, the fundamental makeup of the Vietnamese economy has shifted over time, and we think it will going forward. What's driving this? Now, what's driving this, and why is this important for Da Nang? One is location. This is accelerating in recent times because of geopolitical considerations, but also, fundamentally, Vietnam is very well positioned in, in its region. Labor force. Vietnam has a large and well-educated labor force. Incentives. The government is committed to development. The government is providing incentives that, that are needed for, uh, uh, to attract investment. Social economic stability. Vietnam offers a, a stable envir environmental system, a stable work environment, stable legal system, and the government's priorities to development. This is uh, very true here in Da Nang uh, with the Da Nang High Tech Development Parks. Um, and with that, I will hand back to, to talk about, uh, hand back to our host to talk about Da Nang. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Lu for your insightful information on the overview of uh, the investment trend in Vietnam. And now we look at Da Nang. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today it's my honor to be here to talk with you about Da Nang, the capital and uh, the powerhouse of central Vietnam. And uh, Da Nang can offer uh, what for you <coughs> and what kind of sector of investment you should look for in Da Nang. So please uh, uh, follow my presentation. As you know, Da Nang High Tech Park is the only high tech park in uh, central Vietnam and one of the three high tech parks in Vietnam. It has a good location, about a 20 minute drive from the downtown, the seaport, the international airport, on the highway connecting with economic zones and in industrial parks in central Vietnam. Da Nang High Tech Parks has the land area of more than 1,000 100 hectares with the function of being a science park. <coughs> da Nang High Tech Park now has significant infrastructure to facilitate the operation of the projects there. At present, there are more than 20 projects have been licensed with a total investment capital of more than 600 million US dollars. Six groups of high tech industry are encouraged to be invested in the high-tech park, including electronics, biotech, information technology, automation, new materials, and environmental technology. If you invest in the high-tech park, you will, you will see that in, um, you will, can enjoy a lot of investment incentives. And uh, the investment here uh, including the services, the manufacturing. For example, the, in the uh, ICT rate, uh, the corporate income tax rate is up 10% for 15 years. For the first four years, you will pay 0%. For the next nine years, 5%. And for the next two years, 10%. After 15 years, you pay the CIT rate of 10, 20%. And for import tax of 0% will be applied to goods for fixed access, including equipment, machineries, and components. Also, land rental will be exempted for the whole project life of 50 years, or for 19 years or 15 years, depending on your sector of investment. And nearby Da Nang High Tech Park, we have a Da Nang IT Park. It's developed last year by a private company, and the infrastructure of the, high, of the Da Nang IT Park also available and to uh, meet the own requirements of the investor. And the land area for the first phase is uh, more than 131 hectare. If you invest in the Da Nang IT Park, you also enjoy a lot of incentive like the Da Nang High Tech Park for the corporate income tax, also 10% for 15 years. 
and then import tax, 0% for the rules and the machinery equipment for the fees assessed. Da Nang, I check, da Nang IT Park also supply you a lot of services, a lot of products, especially for the small and medium sized enterprises. For example, if you don't lease the land to set up your facility, you can uh, lease the, the workshop, the ready built workshop, factories, or the office already built, and also with the accommodation of the expert. So with the, the price is uh, rational. In addition to the high-tech park, the IT park, we also, several, we also have some several software parks, especially for the software company. The first is the Da Nang high-tech park number one. It's already occupied by more than 70 uh, companies from overseas and uh, local. And uh, it had two hectares for the FPT complex. CT, we have uh, five hectares with 3,000 staff working there. And uh, in October this year, we will set up the next uh, um, software park, the, uh, the software park number two, with the uh, area of five hectares too. So I believe that for the software company, they have enough working space in Da Nang. And uh, last, next year, we will start uh, for the building with the uh, software park number two at the uh, suburb of Da Nang City. So what uh, incentive policy for the software company? The same with the corporate income tax, 10% for 15 years. For import tax, so for the machinery equipment and components for, uh, for software production, you will pay 0% for the import tax and personal income tax, uh, uh, the people working in the ICT sector we enjoy the reduction of 50% for the personal income tax. Uh, by the year 2030, Da Nang would like to be a smart city. So we already issued the structure, the framework of the smart city of Da Nang with six pillars in 17 prior priority areas and now we are calling for invest investment for a lot of projects like uh, smart lighting, uh, smart traffic, uh, smart control of water safety, food safety, etc. And uh, we also have a, a smart district too. It looks like a priority uh, project. Uh, and you know, uh, come to Da Nang, uh, I think that uh, foreigners not only uh, work, but also uh, play, uh, relax, and of course live for a long time. That's why we focus on upgrading the infrastructure, like we, will make, uh, we would like to set up the new seaport for Da Nang City. It, uh, it, will, it will be the biggest container port in central Vietnam. The second, we would like to uh, relocate the railway station. The, sec the third, we will uh, have the new landfills and uh, we also have the, uh, set up a lot of car parks for the, uh, for the residents and also for the foreign community in Da Nang because tourism sector now developed very fast. And uh, we also focus on setting up the world-class schools for children and uh, hospitals for all people. Not only for the people in Da Nang but also for the central Vietnam. We can, they can save money uh, their children can, uh, can uh, study at home and we can uh, have the uh, good hospital for treatment of our diseases. So I think that uh, uh, for the time limit, we cannot share <coughs> anything. So please uh, contact with the IPA later. Uh, so we would like to provide you with more detail about this. Thank you very much for your listening. So you know that um, we would like to share with you the success stories of the company in Da Nang, especially for the FDI company. They are our distinguished guests today. And uh, I think that after li listening to their success story, you can understand more about Da Nang, what you have seen on the video clip and through my presentation. Please, 
But first, I would like to introduce Mr. Chris Allen Vallum, member of the Board of Governor Ancham Da Nang, to have uh, some words, please. Yeah, thank you very much for having me here. I really appreciate it. Uh, I am Chris Van Loo. I am the Vice Chairman of AmCham, American Chamber of Commerce in Da Nang City. I'm basically in charge of bringing American foreign investment to Da Nang. Uh, my other role is uh, I'm the General Director of Riverside Garden Tower, and I'm also the General Director of Indochina Riverside Tower. Uh, I've been tasked to be the leader for AmCham in Da Nang. Oh, why? The answer is because I've lived in, Dang, in Da Nang for more than 20 years. So when I hear about these programs that they want to launch for the city, about these ambitious programs, talking about by 2030 we're going to achieve this, I believe it because I've seen it. When I first arrived here in 1998, I saw the opening of the Sung Hang River Bridge, it was the second bridge in central Viet and Da Nang, sorry. And uh, then there was no real infrastructure. There was no beach road that we all enjoy nowadays. Everyone was worried about saving money from the typhoons. And now, after just 20 years, you can see all around you the development, the seven bridges, the, the wide roads, the, the access to water everywhere, to, to waste disposal. And uh, I don't think it's very ambitious at all. I think Da Nang has the potential to actually achieve all of the goals that they set, set forward in their presentation. And we want to be a big part of that. And uh, I personally want to be a big part of that because I love Da Nang. I, I, I can't see living anywhere else. It's got the best people, the best air quality, uh, the best beaches, the best mountains, and uh, the best government agencies to work with, in my opinion, since I've been here so long. They're very open and the incentives that we've seen them report on, especially for IT and high tech, are incredible. I mean, these are, these are going to blow away the rest of the other Southeast Asian countries. I've read a lot of reports about Chinese manufacturing moving towards other Asian countries because of the pandemic, but also because of the trade relation problems with the United States and other countries. Some of these reports say that Vietnam's not ready for that. I would agree to a certain extent. We don't want everything from China. We want the good stuff from China. We want the IT components, we want the high tech components, the production of it. And we have the means in Da Nang in particular to distribute it, because we have the international airport, as they say. We are moving the port to the other side to make it deeper, to make it bigger, to make it safer for everyone. So essentially, Da Nang is perfectly positioned for that, and AmCham really wants to be a big part of trying to boost the potential of American investment in central Vietnam and Da Nang in particular. Mm, yeah. So thank you very much, Chris. No, now you are a citizen of Da Nang now. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah, sure. sure. Yes. And uh, the next, you know, USC Vietnam has the largest investment in manufacturing, aerospace, accessories in Da Nang High Tech Park. And I'd like to invite Mr. Levis <coughs> Lee, the managing director of uh, uh, USC Vietnam, to share his story. Please. Good afternoon. Thank you for your invitation, and uh, I'm very honored to be here to represent UAC Vietnam in this beautiful city, Da Nang. Firstly, uh, as many you can see, Da Nang uh, uh, become an attractive, attractive investment location for both uh, domestic and also international investors. After extensive uh, search in Southeast Asia, UAC chose uh, Da Nang as investment uh, location and um, Da Nang exceed uh, UAC's expectation in the following areas. Investment support and transparency from authorities at, at all levels, such as People Party, uh, People's Committee, Da Nang High Tech Park, and support departments. Uh, support facility variety from uh, Central Vietnam helped UACV to connect with uh, world-class universities, cla uh, qualified workforce. Work ethic in, uh, found here in Da Nang is uh, uh, found being uh, very quality focused, which is the key uh, element in aerospace. Global logis logistics from strategic uh, uh, seaport from ch Central Vietnam allows us to connect with uh, world uh, industries. <coughs> with continuous uh, support and uh, 
professional support from the city uh, authorities and uh, departments of uh, Da Nang High Tech Park, we successfully finished our phase one investment here. And uh, together with the high qualified workforce found here, we have shipped our first FAIs to our customers. And obviously we understand that uh, uh, in these challenging uh, times for all of us as the COVID-19 pandemic spreads with alarming speed, uh, I do believe that we can find uh, opportunities in any, any challenge. UAC made a big commitment here in, uh, in Da Nang City and will strive towards excellence to bring UAC Vietnam uh, global as soon as uh, possible. To conclude, I would like to wish you all good health and hope that you can find the best uh, investment place here in this beautiful and potential Da Nang City. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Lee Willis. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now you see that UAC Vietnam, they would like to uh, increase uh, the investment capital, I believe, in the, f in the near future. Yeah. Now they have a very, uh, very good uh, factory and uh, we can hire a lot of uh, workers uh, to work for USC Vietnam. So the next we would like to uh, talk about uh, Ubisoft. You know, I believe that most of the young people, you know, they know Ubisoft because it's very famous with the excellent games. And uh, Ubisoft Vietnam is a newcomer to Da Nang City. They have just opened their studio since uh, April this year uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah, and now I would like to invite the managing director, Mr. Aurelian Palas of Ubisoft Vietnam to share his story, please. Thank you. Xin uh, chào everyone. My name is Aurelian, I'm the managing director of uh, Ubisoft Vietnam. I don't know if you can see my slide right now, but um, I, I'm gonna uh, explain you a little bit about what we are doing and I'm very honored to be invited today to get the chance to share with you more about Ubisoft and of course to answer your question that we will send online afterward. Welcome to our world. Ubisoft is one of the major players on the gaming industry with 18,000 people from all around the world working on different and various fields such, such as engineering, art, animation, design, sound, big data, motion capture, narrative and so on. Last year, we reached around $2.2 billion revenue around the world. And the video game market today is uh, probably the most innovative and dynamic entertainment sector in the world, reaching one, uh, around $140 billion revenue last year, with half of it coming from mobile games and the strong growth of Asia. Today, the video game market generates more revenues than music plus cinema combined together. Few words about the studio, about Ubisoft Da Nang, that we decided to open uh, recently and we announced in April. Um, we opened a few months ago in April and the studio is focused on creating new mobile game and we are proud to get the chance to bring our content made in Vietnam to a global audience. We are aiming to reach more than 100 talents here in Da Nang, and we are committed on a long run to develop the video game sector locally by working with universities and the local authorities. We built a workplace that encouraged creativity and collaboration between teams and we bring the best international experts to drive the growth of the local talents. Diversity matters for Ubisoft. We already got eight different nationalities in Da Nang here, working in the studio and 80% remain Vietnamese citizen. Ubisoft Da Nang offer a unique opportunity for developer to learn, to grow, and to work with the best video game <coughs> IPs in the industry today, such as Assassin's Creed or Rabbids, to name few of them. I will conclude with why Da Nang, which is one of the questions uh, everybody is asking me. I think you got the answer now, but the city is offering the best life quality in Vietnam, which is an important factor to inspire our talents and create the best game of tomorrow. <coughs> We can find here some of the top universities of the country 
and the local government investment on infrastructures, including for us, internet bandwidth, for example, offer good condition for IT companies like Ubisoft. Last but not least, the strong vision and commitment from Danone government, including incentives on IT sectors, has one of the main pillars of the city, uh, one of the three main pillars of the cities, give us quick feedback, support, access to answer whenever we need it. I'd like to thank IPA today uh, for all the support you give us during the month and allow us to open a studio within the COVID uh, situation. This is uh, extremely unique. Today we have most of our people working from home, but in Danon we managed to open it. So thank you very much for that. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you, Mr. Aurelian Palas. You know, Ubisoft uh, came to Da Nang last year. Uh, they met with IPA and asked for the procedure, how they can set up the facility, the open, uh, the open the studio in Da Nang. And uh, we uh, provide them with uh, a lot of information. And uh, six months later, they set up, they opened their new studio, the first studio in Vietnam. So I believe that the ICT company can uh, look at the example of Ubisoft and welcome to Da Nang. Now you see, uh, thank you very much for the insightful speeches of uh, all our uh, speakers. Uh, they are very interesting and valuable for the people who are looking for the investment opportunity in Da Nang and just for coming to Da Nang to look at what we have just said. Now we come to the section of Q&A. So please uh, send, your, uh, send your questions to our team and we are willing to give you any feedback. Please. Yeah, we have received a number of questions. So I think that uh, we will to the first question. The first question is, consider to have the potential to become the Silicon Valley of Vietnam. What is the competitive advantage <coughs> of attracting investment of Janang compared to Ho Chi Minh City? So I think that uh, Mr. Luke uh, Trailer he now is living in Ho Chi Minh City, and sometimes he came to Da Nang to, uh, to, to have a meeting and to uh, relax in Da Nang. And also, he also a consultant. So I think that we would like to invite uh, uh, Mr. Luke Trailer to give the feedback for this question. Thanks, Please. I hope I don't upset my Ho, Ho Chi Minh City <laughs> friends. Um, yeah, I mean, I, that's, that's a fantastic question. Uh, as was mentioned by some of our other colleagues, uh, site location search is a critical multivariable calculation. Um, before we talk about the differences between Ho Chi Minh City and Da Nang, and how uh, Ho Chi Minh City or Da Nang could become the next Silicon Valley, maybe it would be, it'd be worthwhile to take a second and step, uh, step back and think, how did the real, so, uh, the original Silicon Valley come to be? And what were some of the, the, the factors that led to the creation of that location? And I, actually, I think that might be informative to, to look at what's going on here in Vietnam. So originally, the, with the development of the transistor in MIT, in Boston, there was a company called Fairchild uh, Semiconductors that was built around the original development of the semiconductor. And there was a guy named uh, Robert Noyce. And actually, Robert Noyce, uh, Dr. Noyce, had a sick mother. And the sick mother actually, actually lived in California. So he asked for a leave of absence to be with his sick mother in California. And when he got there, he realized, hey, there's no winter here. The food's great. There's a university here right down the road that's fantastic. The government is very excited to, uh, to build an IT infrastructure. Perhaps we could move some of our operations from Boston to California. So he called some of his friends at, at, at uh, Fairchild, and they moved out and formed Intel. Now, I think that's a really informative story because Intel is actually one of the key anchor 
tenants here in Vietnam. And so I think that uh, with the large MNCs coming to Vietnam, uh, there will be another shift looking for a quality of life, looking for the, the quality infrastructure and their local growth. And I think Vietnam, and particularly Da Nang, is uh, well positioned. So with that analogy, let's dive in a bit. One, Da Nang is undeniably a wonderful place to live. Um, I'm, I'm very lucky to have an office here in Da Nang. We're the only other big four that do. And so that gives me the excuse to come up here whenever I can, <laughs> usually about once a month, which is uh, not, not nearly enough. Um, as was pointed out by some, some of my, my uh, co-hosts uh, co here, uh, Da Nang is a really fun place. It has a broad base of talent. It has the, the government incentives and the government initiatives to, uh, to move forward. And the government here is committed to, to growing the industry and transitioning towards uh, a, target, uh, a target operating model of the future economy. Vietnam has specific goals that for its development, but it wants to not only lead for Vietnam, but lead for Southeast Asia. Vietnam wants to be one of the smart cities of Southeast Asia, and uh, if it does achieve that and become one of the, 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 the smart, uh, smart cities for Southeast Asia, it'll not only be a leader for Vietnam, but for Southeast Asia. And uh, Vietnam has a physical infrastructure, whether it's uh, Da Nang High Tech Park or uh, one of the software parks. The, the infrastructure in Vietnam is developing and it's uh, well positioned to be a, a uh, as, we, as we point out, the Silicon Valley of the future. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Luke. Yeah. Now we have just received a, a, a question from our audience. So the, this is the, the question. What is the most challenges for investors who invest in Da Nang? Its regulation or the manpower, etc. So, so. Um, I think that uh, mm. I think that I, I, I would like to uh, invite Mr. Levi, uh, Levi, yeah. yeah, to uh, give his comment. Honestly, neither one is not challenging, uh, in my opinion. Mm. We had uh, we had, uh, so to speak, breaks in our process, but nothing big. We we never stopped. So we now in this pandemic, we had no no we had challenges, but we could go over, over and over. So all the issues were solved in no time with the, with the help of the uh, city leaders and the governments and from the high tech park. Again, I can't say that we had an, I don't know how you call it, an uh, uh, miss opportunity. So I cannot say neither one or the other one. I don't see any issue being here. I'm here not more than two years, but uh, beside uh, the workforce found and everything, also the personal life, I have two kids and uh, those kids are going to school here, kindergarten school, we are living here mm -hmm. and we integrate uh, being part of Danang family very easily. So mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, it's a great place to be, the perfect place to be. We never went home since we came here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm not, uh, I cannot say anything r hardly being uh, happen here. So, yeah. great weather also, by the way. <laughs> great, a little bit uh, hot, but no winter. That's 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 a good thing, yes. and good good what ocean water yeah. as well yes. on the personal side. Yeah, thank you, thank you for Mr. Levy. And uh, how about uh, how about Aurelien? You would like to have uh, some comment? Yeah, for for us, um, the, the story of Ubisoft in Vietnam. We you remember when we came last summer? We actually was, of course, as uh, any big group here before investing on a, on a new uh, studio, we were checking at different cities, different places, uh, Saigon, Hanoi, to mention only a few. But what we found here in Da Nang, I think it's, uh, and we wanted to create, to open a studio that will create games. Uh, we were not here to, let's say, outsource art or some companies can do or QC, so we were really focusing on creating. And we see on the city a very good potentials to um, to create talents that wants to, of course, live here with good conditions, but stays a bit matures and that can um, um, yeah, that can, that can live and be happy. So they want to create here within the city the game of tomorrow. So that mm -hmm. was very important. 
And the main difference we had with the other big cities, mm -hmm. I think it's the accessibility. Mm -hmm. Here, everything is accessible. Yeah. Not only the beach, not only the mountain, yeah. but also the government, but mm -hmm. also the university, the people, uh, and all of that give, give me a feeling that I didn't feel, for example, uh, in mm -hmm. the capital or in Saigon. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the reason why we decided at the end to settle down here, mm -hmm. and as you can see, within few months, we managed to get the license, mm -hmm. and we managed to build mm -hmm. up the studio within the COVID situation. Yeah. Uh, thanks to the very good management of the local government here. Yeah. So we were able to, um, yeah, to, to have people physically together because mm. when you want to create games, it's mm. extremely complicated. Mm. And uh, having people working from home, yeah. it's technically possible, but it's challenging for yeah. us. Yeah. So um, for us, so far, it's been um, a, good, a good story and we had uh, all the access and support we want. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Arlene. Thank you. So uh, we think that we move to the next question. We have just received the question. Uh, I'd like to read the question. Re there is information from the beginning of, 19, of 2019 that Da Nang has implemented five key contents to attract investment, including promoting the application of online information technology and supporting investors in place. How are they being carried out? So uh, Mr. Le Ching Ching, the vice chairman, he's in charge of uh, managing directly for the ICT sector of Da Nang. So I think that I would like to invite Mr. Le Ching Ching uh, to give the feedback for this question. Uh, we can see that uh, recently Da Nang City has um, paid a lot of attention and carried out a lot of solutions uh, for ICT application and to boost the transparency of information and to generate a favorable, uh, favorable and active investment environment for the investors. And the Da Nang City is only way try to accompany and provide your, um, favorable conditions and environment for uh, business and investment uh, for everyone. So recently, we have uh, done the following things. First, we issued the projects to be a smart city in Da Nang to, uh, from 2018 to 2025 with a vision to year 2030. This is the fundamental orientation for development. And from there, we can have the relevant orientation for ICT development in governance and in the city development. Uh, and the second thing is that the ICT application uh, in um, the provision of uh, public services, especially the investment procedures, um, we uh, connected the city's e civic um, e public service portal to the national e service portal, um, especially during the COVID-19 um, time, um, we, uh, uh, we have successfully put, uploaded 500 uh, public services on the e-portal. And, uh, um, and secondly, we also um, uh, uh, we also allow the uh, e-payment uh, through the e-service portal. So at the moment, uh, investors and citizens can pay online for the ser uh, public services, on, yeah, uh, including registration fee and other administra uh, administrative procedure fees. And we also um, uh, implement um, and use the software for management and monitoring, monitoring um, of investment projects. And we started this since 2019. Um, so um, the use of the software support the cities in the management and monitoring of investment projects better, um, on, and not only for the projects within the high tech part and the IT part, but also with the ones with uh, outside of those two. Uh, parks. And uh, it helped to enhance efficiency of governance um, and uh, monitoring of um, projects. And, uh, and this system, the software also enabled the investor to look at the map of all of the investment projects and can also track the um, progress of uh, administrative procedure handling uh, and uh, license application approval. Uh, and this is a big uh, 
a progress in the reforming of investment procedures. Um, so Thank you, Mr. Chair. Effort of the so we also receive uh, several questions more. Now we come up with the next question. How does the time for approving an investment project into Da Nang High Tech Park compare to other localities? What are the key criteria for examining the licensing authority? So I believe that Mr. Sun, the head of Da Nang High Tech Park and Industrial Park Authority, is willing to give the feedback for this question. Please. Đại diện ban quản lý khu công nghệ cao và các khu công nghiệp. Chúng tôi xin cảm ơn quý khách đã quan tâm đến khu công nghệ cao. Theo bộ thủ tục hành chính của ban quản lý khu công nghệ cao, các công nghiệp của ban quản lý khu công nghệ cao. Uh, so, as we have uploaded uh, on the official website, the time um, period for approving a, uh, a investment license is 22 days. Uh, in case that there is additional uh, requirement like um, um, like appraising of the goods and uh, and the, the, uh, the qualities of uh, of related uh, tasks, then we would uh, contact directly with the investors for further information. When we um, uh, are praising the investment proposal, the two biggest important uh, criteria is first is the technology used and second one is the products or the good. Uh, the technologies and the uh, products should be in the prioritized list of the government to be invested, to be chosen for the uh, operations of the high-tech part uh, as mentioned in the uh, in the decision uh, number 13 and 34 of the government. Uh, uh, and uh, we, uh, apart from that, we also consider many other criteria as regulated by the government. Uh, first, uh, is the development of the projects can meet the requirements, and second, the production line and the technology the technologies must meet the standard requirements. And also, we also look at the financial resource and their um, investment uh, capacity. And one more thing is their capacity in environmental protection and in the uh, land use efficiency, uh, as uh, apart from other criteria. Um, um, Ms. Fu was already introduced to you a lot of information about the high-tech part. At the moment, we already successfully granted uh, um, the license to 21 uh, projects. Uh, the uh, number is still limited, um, but we are committed to um, uh, uh, supporting and welcoming uh, the big investment, a uh, big investor, uh, so that we can contribute more to the development uh, echo and social uh, development of the city. Uh, so we warmly welcome the investors to come to us. Uh, we will be willing yeah. to provide you with Thank further you, information if you need. Th so if you need more information, please uh, contact with uh, Mr. Sun or with me. So we will be uh, willing to provide you with the uh, detailed information. Now the next question is, uh, this question is uh, about the human resource development. In the process of learning about investment conditions in Da Nang, one of the issues that concern investors is uh, the local human resource have not met the needs of businesses, both in quantity and quality, particularly human resources in the field of ICT and high tech. So what kind of solution does Da Nang have to improve these issues? So I think that uh, this question, I will give some word first, and I would like to ask for the existing investor to have the comment on what Da Nang do is, uh, uh, is uh, correct or not. Or you would like to add some more thing? So you know that uh, Da Nang always uh, uh, emphasize on the development of the human resource because we think that the human resource is the very, very significant uh, factor for development of the social economic um, plan of the city so that we can achieve our targets. You know, at the moment, we are more than 36,000 people working in the techno technology sector, of which about 16,000 people working in the software and digital content sector. 
and uh, according to the estimation of the investor, they are so young, qualified, hardworking, eager to learn, and uh, rapidly adaptable to the working environment. The turnover rate is uh, rather low, and uh, the cost of the labor in Da Nang, you know, is uh, much lower than in Ho Chi Minh City and Hanoi. And uh, you know that uh, to cater for the development of the city with the vision to 2045, so we have to issue a lot of policy and plans to develop the uh, human resource. But we would like to focus on uh, some solution like this. Uh, the first is improve the quality of training at the vocational school, at the college, universities. Especially, we would like to invest more facility, physical facility, and ask for the private sector to take part in this sector. The second, we would like to uh, train our teachers, our, our, uh, our teachers, so that they can upgrade their teaching skill and their knowledge. Uh, we also facilitate the international cooperation between the local schools with the foreign uh, schools and facilities. Second, we enhance the networking between the enterprises, the companies, with the institutes, with the training facilities. And uh, you know that uh, uh, every year we organize uh, the workshops so that the enterprises and, uh, 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 and uh, the, the training facility can exchange the ideas and discuss what, uh, what number of students they would like to have. So they can sign the contract between <coughs> the businesses and the training facility for providing the graduates after uh, they, uh, uh, they study at the, at the school. And also the uh, businesses also give them the chance to send their students to the enterprises to have uh, some practice with the machinery, with, with the equipment, so that their skill, uh, the, their, their working skill is better when they're graduating from the school. And uh, we also, not only for the training, for the local people, uh, but we also have the policy to attract more talents, both national and foreigner, to Da Nang City to work at the companies, at the, uh, at the enterprises, at the businesses, and also work at the university so you can upgrade our training level. So there are some key solutions. So I would like to ask uh, for your comment. So Mr. Chris, yeah? Uh, yeah, I think doing a lot of good incentives. I think ultimately, and what we see from this pandemic, and when we want to talk about education, mm -hmm. is that I think what Da Nang really needs is to have an international university from America or Europe based in Da Nang City. Yeah. Like, not a partnership, which mm. is the traditional model I see in a lot of areas in Vietnam, but an mm. actual invested uh, mm. university that could focus more on IT technology yeah. than yeah. on other curriculum, but could do both. Yeah. Because not only do you want to just have IT uh, students, a lot of students in Vietnam who are currently going overseas to travel, mm. I know their parents are gonna be more and more nervous and skeptical, skeptical about mm. sending them overseas and then they get trapped there and have mm. to be chartered flight and quarantine. I mean, mm. this could happen again. Yeah. It's, we've lived through it before. We lived through ASEAN flu and SARS and I mean, Vietnam's very resilient. But I think having that ability to have even my own children go to university in the city would be great for me. Uh, selfishly, but uh, I think that would be the model that I think maybe we can try to work with you on as well to try to bring in a partnership to build an actual university here. Yeah, thank you. If you give us the same incentives <laughs> for the IT park, that would yeah. be really good. Too. I see, I see, yeah. So how about uh, Mr. Levy? Because I know that you, uh, you cooperate with Da Nang Technology <laughs> yeah. uh, University to open the new department. Yes, yeah. in this September we will open the first class of aerospace in mechanics in aerospace. And uh, I'm seeing a lot of questions about human resource. I'm, I will tell you now a fact. Mm. We have uh, installed um, surface treatment line and uh, city size wa wastewater line. Mm. Because of the pandemic, uh, problems worldwide, we yeah. couldn't bring the vendors, or the vendors didn't mm. uh, intend to come to start it over. And what we did, yeah. 
we ask our automation guy mm -hmm. to go to un university and uh, he bring six engineers in automation from the from the local Danang the school and they yeah. started install it started and help us to make it work to, to put it in function of course with support online from the vendors but they did it mm -hmm. and they I think was on the first uh, first time when they saw that so we have so many great stories with with the local workforce mm -hmm. that if you don't believe come see I will I will also be have the open doors on our facility to see and uh, touch it so they 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 help us a lot yeah Thank you. So again, thank you to, to all uh, local uh, authorities and the high schools for uh, giving us such a great, great workforce. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Levy. Yeah. Yeah. So now uh, we move to the next question. This next question is about uh, tourism. So Da Nang has many advantages on uh, resort tourism. Which direction and policy has the city have uh, to encourage investment in medical tourism? Yeah. So, uh, so I think uh, the Vice Chairman Ching would like to share his opinion with us on this question. As uh, you have known, on the 24th of January 2019, the Politburo uh, issued the um, regulation num uh, resolution number 43 for the development of Da Nang City to year 2030 with the vision to year 2045, and which in which um, it specified that Da Nang will focus on the five driving sectors, in which one of the very important one is uh, the development of tourism and high quality services linked with the real estate in for um, relaxation. Da Nang is orientated for the development of uh, uh, health care or healthy tourism and high quality health care services linked with tourism. Um, uh, so that uh, we can create a connection with the uh, regional and global uh, tourism hubs. Uh, we uh, 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 put a lot of efforts and investment into developing the um, uh, high quality general health check uh, services and also um, uh, uh, we recently we have uh, we established a project to build a satellite hospital in Da Nang and uh, after two years we have uh, gained certain achievements. Apart from that, the city is also um, put a lot of effort on uh, providing training for satellite hospitals. We also um, uh, boost the communication of the um, on the satellite hospital services like uh, um, for uh, skin care services etc um, we also uh, call for the uh, investment of international organizations we also negotiate with different partners for um, the development of um, health care services and uh, especially to promote the um, uh, traditional health care um, techniques um, abroad. And recently in Da Nang, we have um, welcomed more um, private investors into the health care uh, industry um, and the cities always try to make our best effort to support the investors with such a new project like the, the uh, children's hospital in Da Nang uh, the, um, and many other hospitals at the moment the cities uh, in invest in the five uh, in the in the five new hospitals project, uh, including the children, international children and women 
hospitals and um, many other hospitals, especially during the COVID-19 um, period. Recently, you can see that the um, hospital in Da Nang shows their capacity. Uh, the six positive cases, confirmed positive cases in Da Nang was um, well cured. Um, um, so, so far, the city uh, has controlled very well COVID-19 uh, situation and create a good um, so thank you, Mr. Ching. conditions for... Uh, we would like to share some comments. Uh, yeah. Mr. Chris, yeah? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, Da Nang is developing at such a, a rapid rate in a lot of great ways in infrastructure, especially in healthcare. Mm -hmm. We've seen that in the last mm -hmm. few years in particular, great mm -hmm. initiatives on this. I think when you talk about tourism, that Vietnam in general and Da Nang could really tap into a, a huge market that they've never tapped into, which is the retirement market, mm -hmm. which is a very big capital market in Thailand, the Philippines, and parts of Indonesia. Mm -hmm. But I think it's linked with the issue of the visa. And if you offer these multi-million dollars or even half million dollar condominiums to foreign investors directly, the transparency can be there very easily because the individual can have a long-term lease. And they can also, with that lease, get a long-term visa so they don't have to leave the country and come back mm. as often as they do. And that, before, t if I said 10 years ago that would be a feasible idea, I wouldn't because the infrastructure for healthcare wasn't there. But now it is, it's really there. And you have supermarkets to support this and this could be a, a great potential boost mm. to tourism for long-term sustainable tourism mm. Mm. to Da Nang in particular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please take a look. I'd like. To. Yeah, maybe I could add a, a point there. Uh, with, with KPMG, I, I also run our healthcare practice for the region, uh, so I, I spend a lot of time uh, uh, looking through uh, Vietnam's uh, rankings in healthcare in terms of health outcomes, in terms of infrastructure and, uh, and investment. Uh, and, and, and first of all, I'd just like to, to compliment uh, Vietnam and, and its, its health outcomes to, to national wealth ratios are actually uh, very good. Uh, and specifically in Da Nang, uh, the, the, if the level of infrastructure investment in healthcare, I think, is, is very high uh, in terms of uh, levels of, of uh, regional GDP and population is, is quite good, actually. Uh, I, I, would, I would second the, uh, the idea of of not only creating uh, a, a blended model of public-private partnerships for, for healthcare administration or, uh, or the administ administering clinical care, but also eventually, you know, you know, through baby steps, creating an inbound market for, for health tourism, maybe starting with by, by slowing some of the outbound medical tourism, because Vietnam does have quite a bit of outbound medical tourism, creating a market in Vietnam for or treating uh, treating these, these these patients, and then ultimately creating a regional hub here for people that uh, that want a uh, quality place to live, a clean place to live that's, that's low stress and uh, has a, you know, a wonderful environment. Uh, coming from a person who spent ten years of his life in China, I mm -hmm. can see that there's definitely uh, a market for for such a place. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Luke. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I have a chat receiver. The next question. The question is, the investment trend of European businesses is mainly focused on high-tech industries. How does the EVFTA agreement affect Vietnam in attracting investors from Europe in this area? Yeah, they ask about the impact of EVFTA to Vietnam. So, yeah. I think KPMG. Yeah, <laughs> KPMG yeah, I'll always pick on the finance companies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll take I'll take a stab at that. It's a really interesting question. Now, like any bilateral agreement, there's going to be uh, there's going to be benefits uh, to to both uh, issues to both sides. So maybe we could unpack it a little bit and and think about uh, some of the issues for for the, uh, the European side and for the Vietnam side. Uh, maybe let's start with the the Vietnam side. Uh, Vietnam is the number one exporter to the European Union in ASEAN, but the uh, Europe is the number five importer, uh, five investor in Vietnam in terms of ranking. So immediately, there should be a major benefit to Vietnam in terms of access to capital. That'll be a big benefit. Uh, next, 
I would say is probably the, uh, the commitment that Vietnam has, has put forward to improve ad administration and policies. This is, uh, and this will be in terms of intellectual property and transparency and, and investor rights protections. This will be huge. And this will have a big impact uh, far beyond the scope of the EBFTA and into other areas. And admi administration is improved and transparency is uh, enforced. Now, in terms of benefits to the European side, I would say probably the biggest benefit is that other than uh, Vietnam, only Singapore in Southeast Asia has signed a uh, trade agreement with, uh, with the European Union. So. Uh, access to one of the fastest growing economic regions in the world now is limited to Vietnam and Singapore. Now Singapore is a much more mature market and doesn't have the same level of growth as Vietnam. So if, if you're an investor in uh, the European Union and you want to access the high growth markets of Southeast Asia, Vietnam is now by far your number one choice. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Luke. <coughs> so, uh, <coughs> Now we come to the, the next question. This question is uh, relating to the high-tech park and the industrial park. So can you share the plan of the city for expansion or for the development of the industrial park and the high-tech park in Da Nang City with the vision to 2030? So I think that uh, this uh, question is very uh, suitable for Mr. Sun, yeah, <coughs> he's willing to share. Yeah. Uh, the um, uh, vice chairman uh, already shared about the vision for development of the Nang for the high-tech part and the IT part. Uh, the recently, the city uh, um, uh, conducted the overview and adjustment to the development of the cities and some of the content related to the high-tech part and the IT part. Uh, ho hopefully, to year 2020, we will uh, finish the facilities for the high-tech part. And, and to support the investor better, we will continue to um, to provide a good maintenance uh, to uh, the um, available facilities there and to create the best uh, favorable conditions for investors and businesses. And also, uh, we consider the expansion of high tech park to uh, have a better facilities um, for potential investors. For the uh, industrial zones in Denang, the city already approved the uh, development of three um, uh, industrial zone with a total area of 900 hectares uh, with the investment of uh, 15 billion. Um, so uh, we uh, call for, um, we will try our best to develop these three industry zones to serve better the investors. Thank you. So uh, you know that um, uh, Da Nang City would like to be an innovative city. So now we focus on development of the startups to help the startup to grow in Da Nang City. So I would like to uh, uh, to to, uh, to ask Mr. Le Chung Ching to talk something about the startup in Da Nang. Yeah, and uh, then we will uh, we will end to the to the webinar because the time is uh, is uh, limited. Okay. Now we go to startup. Startup for Vietnam is a new uh, thing. And Da Nang care a lot about the development of startups. That is the reason why that uh, in recent years we uh, tried to do different things and we have gained certain achievement even though it's still limited in the coming time. We, we would look forward to the continued support of the central government and um, make our best effort to create a favorable environment and conditions for the interested um, investors. Um, one good uh, thing is that uh, the central government already identified Da Nang to be one of the three, one of the three national hubs for innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, so uh, this means that we have the advantage of uh, uh, the uh, 
um, attention and investment from the central government. Um, so if we can realize this, then Da Nang will be um, the, driving, the driver for the development of the whole region of the central uh, Vietnam. Uh, on this occasion, I would like to uh, call uh, the investors to come uh, with Da Nang and we are committed to providing you uh, the favorable conditions for your operations, for your business. Can I ask Mr. Sơn to have some Sơn comment on that? <coughs> we are working with the um, uh, department agencies, um, especially the incubation in high tech part and in collaboration with the universities and institutions. And we hope to receive the support and the collaboration from the institutions, um, universities, and, and schools, uh, in especially in high tech, um, in high technology you, incubation. Thank you. So now we have a span one more, uh, one hour, more than one hour, uh, for talking about Da Nang, and uh, we hope Da Nang can receive, uh, can have a chance to receive. Uh, the people who are pay attention to the city to come to Da Nang uh, as a tourist or even as an investor. So you all are welcome. Yeah. And thank you very much for your time to follow this webinar. And please feel free to send us your comments and uh, your opinions, your questions yeah, to our team. And we are willing to give the feedback after this webinar. And to end this webinar, I would like to invite Mr. Le Chung Ching, the Vice Chairman of Da Nang's People Committee, to uh, have uh, some uh, closing remarks. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the uh, Da Nang City's government, I would like to express our sincere thanks to the KPMG company for supporting us in organizations of this webinar. I'm very glad to and uh, highly appreciate the act, uh, act, active sharing and participation of Amcham Vietnam, of UAC Vietnam, of Ubisoft uh, for your investment and business activities in Da Nang City so far. And thank you for your high appreciation to the investment environment in Da Nang City and the support from uh, the relevant department in implementing uh, the investment procedures in Da Nang City. Your meaningful sharing will provide it um, with um, motivations for our further reforms to create a more favorable and better environment for your future investment and business. Uh, this is an opportunity for Da Nang to introduce to all of you the policies, the incentives, uh, and strengths of Da Nang cities, especially in the prioritized sectors uh, in tourism, in high tech, in high technologies. Uh, we hope to receive your visit in the future um, to Da Nang cities. Um, thank you very much for your time um, and your attention for the webinar. I hope to see you again in the coming webinars and conference. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chairman Le Chung Ching. And uh, thank you, all our speakers, and uh, all of you, to follow this webinar. And uh, we would like to wish you good health, happiness, and success. Yeah, hope to see you again. Hope to receive you in Da Nang City. Thank you.